Well, you want to learn how to make rice that is no cook, instant rice, all soft, all ready to go. No cooking, no heating. Only thing you need to do is rehydrate it with water. It's called dehydrated instant rice. Let's take a journey down this and find out how to do this. Well, welcome back guys. This is Jerry with the Sensible Survival Solution. And in this video, well, as you saw from the intro, we're going to have, we're going to make instant rice. That is a no cook, ready to eat rice. Uh, I've always kind of chuckled when I saw the uh, instant rice commercials about how you had to cook the rice to make it instant rice. Well, as you saw in the intro, it's a matter of just adding the water to the dehydrated rice and it recovers, it comes back ready to eat. So in this type of instant rice, this is made for people who uh, you don't want to cook when your electricity's out. Well, maybe you do want to cook, but you can't. That's the, that's the fact. What we're doing in our uh, food prep is that we're making the, these ingredients now while we have the power and the electricity and the ability to do so. We then pressure can some. In this case, we're going to dehydrate. And that dehydrated product then goes into our long-term food storage as a ready-to-eat kind of heat and eat meal, if you wish. Just add water. There's no heating. There's no cooking involved. That's really what I'm trying to say. So this is a no-cook meal. We've lived through hurricanes and disasters, and when we did, we didn't have the power. So we couldn't cook. We couldn't make even the instant rice that you could buy at the store. This product will allow you just to add water, and then you'll be able to eat, be able to feed your family. We use it for ingredients into other meals within our uh, food storage, so something like uh, beef tips over rice with gravy. So this is a good sub uh, subsidence meal for us. It, it helps us. Here's how we're doing it. We've got this big pan on, on the stove. I've got about that much water in it. I've already added my salt, so it's ready to be uh, ready to cook. I'm bringing it up to a boil. Once I do, I'm gonna add three cups of regular rice, just the stuff you buy at the store, the not expensive, just regular rice. Three cups is gonna create over six cups of regular prepared rice. And at that point, we're gonna take it to the dehydrator and get it then dehydrated to make that instant rice. So uh, at this point, let me get this going. I'll take some pictures of the inside of this so you'll see. I'll bring you along on it. Just enjoy the ride and learn how to make your own instant rice. All right, we've got a rolling boil now. I'm gonna add three cups of rice to it. All right, th at this point, I'm gonna reduce the heat and start stirring, because I do not want this to stick. There's nothing worse than rice stuck to the bottom of the pan. So let's turn this puppy down and start stirring. Now what we're gonna have here is about, oh, 10, maybe 15 minutes later, we're gonna have our rice be cooked, and then I'm gonna take it over and rinse it off in the sink. While this is cooking, though, I'm gonna prepare one of my uh, sheets and show you how that works. This is for the uh, dehydrator. So we'll get that dehydrator uh, sheet ready to go. So just hang on. Okay, my dehydrator has 12 of these sheets. They have a uh, little square rectangle in the center. That's where the heat flows up through to the next to the lab, next layer, next, next, next. So when I lay the parchment paper down, I have to cut this hole out for that heat to rise. Now you're going to use parchment paper so that obviously the, the rice is not going to stick on here or fit well on there. So I have to use a, the parchment paper in order to let the rice lay on there. Now I turn it with the curves down. It's a little easier to work with. And it just so happens that the parchment paper fits really well this way, width-wise. Now all I have to do is cut out the center. Oh, 
holes cut. Now let's cut this edge off here, straighten it out. Okay, now that sheet is ready to go. What I'll do now is I'll take the other 12, other 11 sheets and get them basically ready to go as well. But you have to get this parchment paper onto your dehydrator sheet unless you have one of those. They make a plastic um, overlay for some of these sheets. I just don't have one, so I use the parchment paper. Okay, I think we've been cooking for about 10 minutes now. I want to show you what we got. Uh, we've been stirring and making sure it didn't stick. But uh, the way I, I, I don't know how to tell you how to, it, this is more for me a feel. I feel the rice when I'm stirring it. I don't feel it's crunchy. I feel it's soft to the spoon. Another way I know that it's done is you see how it's kind of transparent? The, the flakes or the, the rice kernels, they have a semi-transparency to them, kind of, uh, kind of not clear, but just you can see they're kind of see-through. You see how I see the spoon. That's that's how I know they're done. And then I'll <laughs> I'll taste it to make sure that they're not crunchy. Uh, but that that it, that appears to be done. So what I'm going to do now is take this off the stove to the sink, rinse it, and then I'll bring it over here to the uh, the sheet that I've got ready to go. So hang on, here we go. Okay, we've got the rice done now, and it's now just a matter of just spooning it out. You want to smooth it out on, onto the, to the parchment paper with about that much consistency. You won't be able to see through it. You won't be able for the uh, rice to actually breathe so that when it's dehydrating, it will be able to, to uh, take away the moisture and the rice. Then it becomes like a flake. But that's, the, that's about the... I don't know, the texture that you want, and that's also the, uh, the the amount that you want in a certain area. You want to spread it out so you can see through the rice to the parchment paper. Cover as much of this as you can to the edge. When it goes into the dehydrator, you want to get as much use out of that sheet as you can. When the um, when the rice is done with the dehydrator, it'll look similar to this, but it'll be kind of kind of a crunchy texture. Then that sheet's done. So let's go ahead now. I'll take this sheet and then I'll take it into the dehydrator in the pantry so you can see how it goes in. So just hang on. All right, guys, this is uh, the pantry. This is where I keep my dehydrator. Maybe the light's a little bit darker in here, but this it's darker for a reason. I keep my uh, long-term food storage in here. So what you have here is you stick the tray. Now I'm going to stick it on the bottom first slide them in. I can get 12 trays in here. I don't think I'm going to need that for the amount of rice I have. Oh, here's the light. Um, this came from Gander Mountain. It is basically, a, it's almost like a professional uh, dehydrator. It's not the little round ones you get at Walmart. I got this one at Gander, Gander Mountain. What you're going to do then is you'll set the temperature and the timer when you're ready to rock and roll. The temperature is going to be set at 135. So you'll move it up. It's 135 degrees. Timer, you'll set that on 12 hours. Momentarily it will start. Now um, that's the noise it's going to make. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to slide those other trays in, but the uh, it'll take 12 hours. I'm going to let this cook overnight. So uh, in the morning when we wake up, uh, well, it'll be running until uh, about 9-ish tomorrow morning. 
The good news is, it's gonna make this house smell good. The dehydrator, when it's doing rice, makes the house smell like uh, popcorn. It smells really good. But in the morning, we'll have dehydrated rice, and I'll show you at that point how we put it in jars, and then we use this tool, which is our food saver. I'll use this tool with our jar sucker. I don't know any other term to use, but it goes with our food saver, removes all the uh, air from the jar, and then when we're done, we have dehydrated rice in a quart jar ready to be mixed in with our uh, everyday foods or with our long-term long -term food storage. So, let me get ready, get ready with the rest of these, put these in the dehydrator, and then I'll bring you back tomorrow and we'll see what we got. Okay, we're going through the cycles here. It's set for 12 hours. It's now 11.48, left in the 12 hours. I had it set for 135 degrees. Actual temperature inside the oven is 129. It will come up to the 135. What I wound up with was three full trays and then about a third of another tray. The dehydrator does get hot, so I opened up the window behind it to vent the air out, out of the house and not get the house so hot. So let's uh, let this thing cook overnight and I'll see you guys in the morning. Well, good morning. It's the next day in the uh, instant rice project. So this is that first tray, the one that you saw me put in the uh, dehydrator last night. This is the same tray, so now you've seen the results. So it's kind of shrunk in both ways, horizontal and vertical. The rice is crunchy, and it's, uh, it's fully dehydrated. It's ready to go into the jars. So I'm just going to kind of mash, kind of get it loose from the paper. And then it goes into the jar. That's all there is to that. So yeah, this this is the texture of the rice. It's uh, crunchy. It looks a like a lot like what it started out as, but it is fully dehydrated and um, great for our long-term food storage. What I'm going to do with this is uh, this is actually going to go into a project that we're going to see soon. Is so uh, I'll make some jars of beef tips with brown gravy with uh, dehydrated mushrooms, dehydrated onions over the dehydrated rice. I'll put that into a quart jar and it will feed six people. Let's just take, it, take this paper now. Got most of them all here. Put the lid on it temporarily, but the um, we're going to do this on a vacuum sealer. But that's the rice. I'll get the other trays out and uh, take the rice and put it in the jar. Once I'm done, we'll see how much we how much the yield is, and I'll give that to you. Just just hang on a second. Okay, here's goes the final step. This is a food saver. This is just a typical food saver. It's got the the roll in there and it does a vacuum seal. So we, we use this sometimes for storing frozen foods. It's got an attachment, the hose, and I have two size jar, jar suckers. Uh, these go on to the top of the jar and we'll vacuum out. This is for wide mouth and this is regular mouth. So what you, uh, what you do is make sure that the rim is completely free of any debris from the pouring in of the rice. Put the lid on, then this goes on top. 
attach those. Now this is going to make some rackets, so just, just hang on. Now that has taken out all the air from the jar. Detach the hose and then pull the lid off, pull the jar sucker off. And what you got then is this is now sealed. You can't pull it off. You can hold it by it. It's it's sealed just as if it was been pressure pressure canned. It's it's sealed. You can put the screw band on if you want. We keep the screw bands around because uh, that allows us to open the jars and keep them sealed if we so desire. So then make sure there's no debris. Attach the hose and then uh, hit the canister button. We're going to remove that hose, and now this is a, another sealed jar. So what we have here are what's, what we wound up with was two quart jars of dehydrated rice. We started with three cups. We made about six and a half cups of cooked rice, and then now we've dehydrated those down to where they are now two quarts. Hope you enjoyed this, because we're going to enjoy eating this. Please like and subscribe, share, help us grow this little channel, make it into something good. Uh, you guys uh, have a great one, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Please like the video, help us build our channel by subscribing to it, and remember to always be ready, be prepared, and be vigilant.